Okay. Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, uh, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is doing good, y'all. We are almost to the Christmas season again. Yay! I know that some of y'all are going to say, girl, we are not even at Thanksgiving yet. But listen to me. Let me tell you something. After 4th of July, it's on and popping from there, okay? Yes, I am one of those people that desperately wants to put my Christmas tree up before Halloween. So, it is what it is. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the case of Emma Walker. Now this one, y'all, I know a lot of y'all out there are mothers and fathers and grandparents and you know, some of them, they just, they just get you, right? And our oldest son is about to be 22 years old. And so we've watched him go through high school years. And this is just, this is just one of those cases that makes you go, ugh. So I'm going to do what I always do, I'm going to tell you guys the whole entire story, the best of my ability from the public information that's out there. And then at the end of the story, we're going to talk about some things that we can hopefully learn from this. And I'm also going to give y'all my opinion. My opinion may be unpopular, to be honest with you guys, about what exactly happened in this case. So make sure you guys stay to the end so you can find that out. Other than that, let's just start at the beginning. In 2016, 16 year old Emma Walker seemed to be living the dream. She was a cheerleader at Central High School in Knoxville, Tennessee, very close with her family. Popular girl at school, well loved by all of her classmates. <laughs> Emma was very kind and warm hearted, but she was goofy too at the same time. <laughs> her teachers, her coaches, her family, big bright smile. She was an honor roll student. She was known to be very sweet and kind. Emma volunteered at her local animal shelter in her spare time and dreamed of becoming a neonatal nurse. As you all can imagine, her parents were extremely proud of her and were envisioning her future long past high school in all of the things that she was going to be and the things that she had to offer this world. And just to make this story well well-rounded in its perfect, beautiful little view, 16-year-old popular cheerleader Emma was dating a popular football player at her high school, 18-year-old Riley Gall. Emma and Riley had been dating for about two years at this point. She was a junior and he was a senior. Riley first noticed Emma when she became a cheerleader her freshman year. At this time though, Riley had a girlfriend, but he could not deny the connection that he had when he made eyes with Emma. Now, they locked eyes at a football game, and according to them and friends around them, sparks just flew, and she was just like, oh my gosh, this is just the cutest football player ever. You guys know. We've seen the Saved by the Bells and the television shows where it's the cute little cheerleader on the field after, at school at pep rallies and football games, and you got the football player takes off his helmet, and he gives her eye contact, and they smile, and then the fireworks in the background, the whole nine yards, that yes, that was them. Before we go any further, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that delivers fresh and quality ingredients from the farm to your front door in less than a week. The holidays are just around the corner and HelloFresh makes this busy time of the year easier than ever with chef crafted recipes and pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your front door so you can spend less time meal planning and prepping. 
Whether you're hosting a holiday party or just stocking up on snacks, you'll find everything that you need at HelloFresh Market from quick breakfast to charcuterie boards and desserts. It's never been easier to prep for a party or even just fill your pantry. And I am always impressed by HelloFresh's line of kid-friendly recipes for the picky eater. It's perfect for families that are looking to try something new this school year. If you get a chance to snag the home-style turkey and biscuits meal, it is so good. A nice, like, comfort food that's warm on the tummy, especially during the cold seasons, and easy to make. Highly recommend. If you want to try HelloFresh, all you got to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use code ChristinaRandall70 for 70% off plus free shipping. Yes, 70% off plus free shipping. Just go to HelloFresh.com and use my code ChristinaRandall70 so you can save today. Thanks again, HelloFresh. Now, Riley was raised by his mother and his grandparents. He was a wide receiver on the football team, but he wasn't your typical jock. He was very, very charming, and his friends would say that he was a funny, intelligent young man who loved to play video games, he was Star Wars obsessed, and he definitely had a nerdy side. Now, at first, Emma's parents, Mark and Jill, thought that he was a great match for their daughter, Emma. Jill said that he was very likable and Mark said that he was a very nice looking young man and he was very well mannered. He was just, you know, your typical charming boy next door type of thing. And they're looking at their precious sweet daughter that is, again, this honor roll volunteer at the animal shelter young girl. And it just looked perfect to them. They were very happy for their daughter at this point until friends started noticing something was off. They started to notice that Riley was becoming very controlling of Emma, and even friends started to notice it too, in like an unhealthy way for sure. And also, during the two years that they were dating, they would have these, you know, teenage love quarrels, fights, the breakup, back together. Mom walks into the room, sees her daughter crying into a pillow, asks her what's wrong. She's having problems with her boyfriend, Riley. You know, and it was just a lot of this, a lot of fighting on and off, starting to become toxic. And at this point, the friends did not think it was so good for them to continue to be together. You you know, it wasn't like one fight or or two. It was like every other day. It was some sort of drama with them too. And then of course, Emma's parents was really getting upset. They're watching their daughter who was bright and vibrant and smiling and loving life, just being so sad all the time and back and forth with him. And people around them at this point thought that it would be the best thing for them to just separate. I mean, at one point, Riley even sent Emma messages on Snapchat that said, I hate you. I hate everything about you. You are the biggest B I ever met. You are dead to me. I'll check the obituary F you. Like, Whoa. Now, Emma's parents was snooping around in her stuff and they found those messages. And can you imagine, moms and dads out there, can you imagine looking through your child's text messages and seeing text messages like that they flipped all the way out, as you can just imagine. They immediately banned Riley from their home and took Emma's cell phone away. However, Riley then gave Emma an iPod touch so they could still text each other and communicate. Oh, y'all, I would be livid. Then not long after Riley started college in the fall of 2016, Emma decided, that's it. I can't take this anymore. You know, maybe everybody around me is right. And she decided to end the relationship. But Riley didn't take it well at all. I mean, there was a bunch of stuff that was going on. They were fighting like he was talking to other girls. He was doing things to try to make her jealous. I mean, it was just way too much drama for these young teenage kids that really needed to be focused on themselves, their lives and their growth. And so when Emma said, okay, this is it. I can't do it anymore. I'm done with this. Riley decided that he was going to get her attention in other ways. On November 18th, just a few weeks after this breakup, 
Emma was at a party at a friend's house when she got a strange text at around 11.30 p.m. It was from an anonymous number and it said, go to your car with your keys, go alone. I've got something you love. If you don't comply, I will hurt them. Emma instantly knew the texts were from Riley. So she had a group of her friends go out to her car with her instead of going alone. That's when they saw Riley laying face down in a ditch. He claimed that he had been kidnapped and he didn't remember anything because he had been hit in the head. Emma didn't believe him and she walked away. However, the very next day, Emma saw someone dressed in all black out in front of her house. She obviously freaked out. It was like this person was following her. She was alone. Nobody was at home with her. So she ran inside and locked the door. She texted her friends, hey, I'm at home alone. Somebody in all black walked down my street and came to my door and rang the doorbell over and over again. I thought I was going to die. She didn't know what else to do. So then she texted Riley and she texted him and said, listen, I hate you right now, but I'm really scared and I need your help. It wasn't long before he was there. It was almost like he was already in the area and he showed up to save the day. He came into the house, he hugged her, she was scared. This whole situation with this person dressed in all black, ringing the doorbell, she was home. He comforted her and before you know it, Riley's mom pulls into the driveway. Now you can imagine when she sees Riley coming walking out of her house while nobody's home when he's not supposed to be there at all in the first place and she was under the impression that they were broke up for good this time. She was absolutely furious. She started yelling at him. She told him he needed to leave, never come back, all of that. Da, 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 da. And when she went inside and started talking to Emma, Emma being very upset was telling her mom about the person dressed in all black and how she was afraid. And this is when Emma's mom said it was probably Riley. Don't you just remember the other night, him laying in the ditch? It was probably him that did this to try to get your attention. Emma's parents were so concerned. They knew at this point that this young boyfriend of hers was willing to go above and beyond in all the wrong ways in order to get their daughter's attention and also control her. Like he was doing things by putting himself in harm's way, but also making her feel unsafe too too and like she needed him and y'all as a parent I just can't imagine how scary that must have been for them because he was unhinged and he was unpredictable and they didn't know what to do. The next day on November 20th, her parents actually followed her back and forth to work just to make sure she got there safely. She got home safely. Nobody in all black jumped out or anything like that and also helped Emma to feel safe at work because Riley would actually be known to sit outside her work and wait for her to come out when they had broke up or argued or make her feel uncomfortable or just try to get her attention. And this was her parents' way of helping her feel better and also helping them feel better as well. However, when Emma got home that night and kissed her parents goodnight and went to bed at around midnight, her parents had no idea that that would be the last time they would ever see their daughter Emma alive again. At 6 a.m. the next morning, Emma's mom came into her room to wake her up for school the next day. She opened the door, she flipped on the light, seeing her daughter laying in the bed. Emma, get up, it's time to get ready for school. Emma didn't move. She walked over to her, Emma, get up, it's time to get up for school. She did not move. She reached down to touch her, and she just knew something was different. She shook her body and it was unresponsive. She began to shake her more. Emma, she didn't move. She checked Emma for a pulse and there was no pulse. Emma's mom freaked out. She called 911 in a complete panic. The first responders got there and they pronounced her dead. Emma was dead, lying in the bed where she had went to sleep at that night. At first, police thought that Emma may have taken her own life, but then they found two bullet holes in her bedroom wall and bullet casings in the yard outside of her bedroom. There was only a small amount of blood, but it was clear that she had been fatally shot behind her left ear. Ear. When investigators started questioning Emma's friends and family, they noticed the same name kept coming up. 
Riley's. While all of this was going on, Riley was posting about Emma's death on Facebook and Twitter. He was making all kinds of posts. That's my beautiful Emma. Rest easy now, sweetheart. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Be sure to remind God about our verse. He even updated his like Twitter bio to living every day through Emma Walker. I love you, beautiful, and I know you're in a better place now. And the creepy thing is we've seen other people do things like this before, and it's not always weird and creepy, but sometimes it is. And in this case, it was very strange for investigators and for her, their friends, like her friends are looking at his social media and going, yeah, but you tortured her and you told her that you wish you would die. And you told her that you would be looking for her obituary and you did all these weird, creepy things. Now all of a sudden it's these Bible scriptures on Twitter and you know, now you love her and you miss her and she's going to be in heaven waiting for you. Seems weird. So then investigators quickly brought Riley in for questioning. One detective said, when I first met him, I thought, hmm, he might have been a grieving boyfriend. But when we got into the interview room and sat down, I felt like there was a dark side. He didn't have a whole lot of passion or concern. Riley told investigators that Emma had blocked his number the night of her death after they had an argument over the phone. And he cried in his car for two to three hours before going to bed. The whole time, he never referred to Emma by her name. He only referred to her as the girl. She texted me. Wh which girl? The one that passed away. Oh, okay. What, what's your name? Emma. Yeah. Although investigators were clearly suspicious of Riley, I mean, we've done this before a million times, right? You, you, you need to look at the people closest, the wives, the husband, the family members. That's typically where they look. And in this situation, all the signs were there, right? The threats, the fights, the weird antics that he was pulling. And now he's literally being like interviewed or investigated. And he is referring to Emma as the girl, that girl, this girl versus Emma. I mean, they already know that they were boyfriend and girlfriend for two years. I'm pretty sure he remembered her name. It was all too strange, but the investigators did not have enough to like make an arrest. Like just because he's weird, he's saying these weird things does not mean he's the one that shot through her bedroom or it doesn't mean they had enough to arrest him and prove it that he shot through her bedroom that night. That is until two of Riley's closest friends came forward and offered to help. Two of Riley's friends from college, Alex and Noah, told investigators that Riley had displayed some concerning behavior since his breakup with Emma. See, not long after the relationship ended between Emma and Riley, he took a whole bottle of Vicodin and drank in an attempt to end it all because of the breakup. Like he was completely unhinged in just about any way you can think of, including trying to uh, allegedly take his own life as well in the process. And on Saturday, November 19th, the day after Riley's supposed kidnapping, you remember when Emma was at the party with her friends and she got that weird text message to come out to the car and they found Riley face down in a ditch. Yeah, the day after that night, he had told his friend Alex that he had stolen his grandfather's gun to protect himself. He then asked Noah how to get fingerprints off of a gun, and he asked both of his friends how to help him dispose of the weapon. When they asked, Riley swore to them that he did not take Emma's life. He told them that he only wanted to dispose of this gun just in case investigators wanted to connect him to a crime that he didn't do. When Alex and Noah told investigators this, they obviously wanted the boys to cooperate with them, but did not want, you know, them to get hurt neither. If Riley did do this, he is dangerous. He's unhinged. And so they had to come up with a way or a plan that they could connect Riley to the killing of Emma as well as connect them to the gun. Cause see, if they just go and get the gun, they can't prove that in court. It, it all had to be connected. So they had to set it up the perfect way. The two boys wore cameras and microphones as they went with Riley to dispose of the gun. Trusting you guys, like with my life, cause I mean, this is 70 years in jail. If I get convicted of something I didn't do. Yeah. And are you guys, are you busy? 
right now. Like, are you about to do anything? Well, can we go to the bluffs? That's fine. Because I, I need to get rid of the gun. At the bluff? I'm going to throw it into the water. They will never, they'll never they find it in the river. Police were able to swoop in just in time to catch Riley with not only the gun he used to shoot into Emma's house, but also with the gloves and the black clothing. The same black clothing that he was wearing when Emma saw him outside and thought it was a stranger. You guys can imagine the extent that this teenage boy went through to get this girl's attention. Even dressed in black from head to toe, went to her house, rang the doorbell, and when she called him, come there to rescue her. Like, oh my gosh. So at this point, he is arrested now. And everybody, all their friends basically knew or felt like it was him anyways. And her friends went on to hold like this candlelight visual for her and the kids from school and teachers and people in the community and her parents. Like, you guys imagine like her parents felt like they did every, I mean, I, I'm just saying that I can imagine that her parents, you know, what more could they have done? You don't pick up your whole family and move out of town because some teenage boy at the high school, you know, is taking it a bit too far. Who in the world would have thought that this could have happened? But still at this point, Riley was still, you know, saying that he didn't, he didn't kill her. You know, he, he was saying he didn't do it. So there was a trial. During the opening statements at Riley's trial, Riley's lawyer shocked everyone in the courtroom by asking the jury to consider Riley as a hero. The defense's strategy was to try to convince the jury that Riley actually tried to save Emma. Oh my gosh, you guys, I know her parents was, oh, can you imagine? This is their strategy. He is the hero here. He's the good guy. Mm. They wanted the jury to believe that Riley was actually trying to protect Emma and that he didn't mean to kill her. He had only fired the gun trying to scare her and to get her attention. He asked the jury to convict Riley of reckless homicide instead of first degree murder. And the trial continued on. And when the jury was sent out, they spent about five hours back there deliberating and then they came back out and they found him guilty. Okay. They found, I just imagine the parents listening to this. Like you got to be kidding me, right? Like that's your defense. You're just trying to, Hey, warning shots. Hey, Hey, he was found guilty of first degree murder, stalking, theft, reckless endangerment and possession of a firearm during a felony, which got him an automatic life sentence. And at Riley's sentencing hearing, he read an apology. He still claims that he never meant to kill Emma. He said, I'm sorry I took Emma away from you, that I robbed you of the experience of watching your daughter grow up. What I can do is tell the truth about that night, and I wanted to scare her. I never meant to take her life, and again, I'm sorry. Now, with the life sentence that Riley has, he will not be up for parole until he is a much older man. I think it's like in his 70s or his 80s. I mean, he's... He's got a lot of sentence. I don't know if he's gonna try to appeal it later or try to get the sentence knocked down or what. But since Emma's death, her family has tried to keep her legacy alive. So the family has since gotten a dog park in a NICU patient room at East Tennessee Children's Hospital named after her. Her mother said, it's all things that are a part of Emma and all mean something. She also said that she hopes people remember her by being kind to others. Now, what do I think? My unpopular opinion about this is, and I know a lot of people don't agree with me and that is okay, but I actually don't think he meant to kill her, okay? I think he was trying to scare her just like he was doing with the others, but I also think that it doesn't matter. I think he still should have got life in prison. I think he still should have got the same sentence because that is unbelievably reckless. I mean, first of all, all of it was wild and you know, I can't imagine what the parents have thought since then, looking back. Like, what if? What if I would have done this? What if I would have put a restraining order? What if I would have called the cops? And I honestly don't think they could have done much more. I don't think they could have done anything else. Mine is packing up their stuff and, and, and moving away. But who in the world would have thought they needed to do this in this situation? I think they did everything right. I think talking to their daughter, having that close relationship, checking her phone, grounding her from her phone, telling her that she shouldn't be with him. I think they did everything right. I think this is just 
so unfortunate and tragic and unbelievable, unbelievable that this kid really thought that he could control her to this point. And what if, say she would have fell for it, say it didn't hurt her, say that he was the one that saved her, you know, and, and it went through the plan that he says he had. Say she married him one day. Can you imagine the life that baby girl would have had married to a person like this at this young of an age? I mean, I, there are still so many questions like, why? You know, and obviously the kid, and he's older now, he's an adult now, he lied so much. You really never know what the truth is. So devastating. I, her poor parents and her brother. She had a brother too that loved her very much. And what do I think we can learn from this? I mean, I, I just think that we should, we need to be in our kids' business. And again, I don't think her parents did anything wrong. I don't think that they could have stopped this, unfortunately. But we still do need to be close close with our kids, close in the relationships that they're in. I know for me as the mother of boys, I'll be the first to tell you that I'd be on my, I, I wouldn't play this for my sons. Okay. I, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to raise men that are going to be imperfect and are going to make mistakes one day, just like we all do, but are, that are also respectful, loving, have morals, values, and stuff like that. I'll be the first one to call my sons out if they're wrong. You can believe that. And I think we all need to do that. We need to be in our kids' business, but also correct them, guide them. But I don't I don't know if I don't know if Riley's family could have done anything different neither. I don't I don't know their side of the story. I just know this is so incredibly tragic. It sucks. It's sad. What do y'all think? Have y'all heard about this story? Do you think anything could have been done different? And, I, and not in a judgmental way, but in a way that we can learn from it. You know, there is that old saying that I always remind you guys that is a, I believe it's like an ancient Chinese proverbs that says, a smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from other people's mistakes. So I'm always trying to look in these cases in different situations and see what we can learn from it. But this just seems to be a very tragic and sad story. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you think? Other than that, I love you guys. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you guys next week for the next video. Love you guys. Bye.